Alrighty. Let's go ahead and start getting things set up. Today we're picking up with Queen Morgan the Third. Both of her predecessors were able to successfully hold on to their crowns. So Hey, how's it going? Uh, not much, Glenn. I just got home from work, so I'm excited to uh, to get down to business. How about you? <clears throat> hey, how's it going, foe? If you'd like to hop in, you can just type exclamation point to join, and then your preferred pronoun, he, she, they. Spencer Remnant 2. Nice. Unlock any more of the uh, archetypes? Alright. With that, we already have enough that we could uh, we can begin the game. We'll give it a couple more minutes just to let people filter in, and then we will start up at uh, about 4.30. So, here in about two minutes. Not yet. Keyword yet. Fair. <clears throat> yeah, I'm glad you were able to to make it, everybody. We'll give it just a couple more minutes for some more to filter in. But we have enough that we can begin the game. We've got Baroness, the Rising Phoenix. Don't worry, Phil. You are in the uh, in the game. You are on the Barons of the March. Yeah, so we got Glenn one four nine of the Chiefs, T Zeiten of the Patricians of the Coast, and then we've got the Rising Phoenix for the Barons of the March. <clears throat> yeah, this game's really fun. It's uh. The best way I can describe it is Game of Thrones, but it's Jackbox. It's like Jackbox Party Pack type deal. Absolute just crazy random bullshit. But it's a political sim. <laughs> By the way, Rose, I found a magic tree seed in to revive fruit. Hey, yo. Revive fruit. I wonder if it works in hardcore. Because that would be bust. Yep. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> they added a revive mechanic. It works in hardcore. Fair. All right. That said... It's 4.30, and we have enough players, so I will hold you hostage no longer. Here we go. Alright, so, for those who don't know, we get three events in a season, and then at the end of the season, there'll be some extra special stuff. Also, I just realized the treasury carries over from the previous game. So we have 10,000 gold in the treasury. Authority and stability reset to six, which is their base values. And, uh, foe, your, uh, your region, the, the march here in the south, very prosperous trade, awful farming. It's been decimated by a Gorgon Medusa twice, basically. <clears throat> so was your military. <laughs> uh, basically, we went to summon a wizard the first time, but then Queen Morgan the First refused to give a tooth to the wizard, even after paying him 2,000 gold. And so, uh, the Stone Maiden went on a rampage through the march. And then during the reign of King Morgan II, uh, we didn't have enough money to hire a wizard. And so we sent in the army, and the army, uh, thousands of soldiers, dead in seconds. The region might not be the best, but mine is easily the worst. I mean, you've got a lot of faith still. But yeah, you are weakest militarily. Also, wait. Wait, I just realized, yeah, barons have ten trade, patricians have three, and patricians start off as, like, the trade faction. Alright, with no further delay, though, let's go ahead and get to meeting the council. 
Now that you're the queen, your first duty is to meet with the Council of Nobles. Let's introduce ourselves to the Chiefs of the North. Good luck in the days ahead, your majesty. You'll need it, dealing with us lot. Thank you, Chief Glenn 149. Patricians of the Coast, represented by Lord Patrician T. Zeiton. A pleasure, your esteemed highness. I hope to see our kingdom prosper and grow wealthy under your reign. And introduce myself to the Barons of the March. We got Baroness, the Rising Phoenix, 1997. Hail and well met, your highness. Under your leadership, we'll whip this kingdom into shape, hmm? And with that, the introductions are done. The council hall immediately fills with raised voices as the nobles argue. Is this what your father fought so hard for? Alright, so, coronation. <clears throat> your majesty, it was an honor to serve your father and grandmother before that, but now it's your time to wear the crown. As is tradition, the council will decide what happens at your coronation. What? But it's my coronation! This isn't an absolute monarchy, your majesty. Everything has to be run past a council vote, even this. Shall we call the nobles in? Alright, so, we have a variety of options here, and you'll be able to vote using exclamation, vo exclamation point vote, space, and then the letter corresponding to the option that you would like. And honestly, we have like so much money. I'm just going to let you guys do whatever. Whatever you'd like to vote for, now's the time. Voting is live. Also, for those who are just now hopping into the stream, you can join at any time with exclamation point join and then your preferred pronoun. And it'll go ahead and sort you into one of the regions. Five seconds left before I can end the voting. And throw the queen into the river. Ah, just like my father before me. <clears throat> it is decided. The queen will be thrown in the river. What kind of coronation is that? A very traditional ceremony dating back to Queen Alma the Wise. It's meant to represent you being reborn as a true queen. The nobles pick you up and carry you out to the Treadwater River, hurling you into the shallow water with a cheer. When you climb back up to the banks, soaking wet, the Chancellor steps forward and places the crown upon your head. Is it your imagination, or are some of the nobles stifling giggles? You better not be giggling. I'll have to make use of the, uh, the decapitator. <laughs> Alright, so now, the path to victory. Spymaster. Your Majesty, you have some big boots to fill. And with your father out of the picture, the nobles will be looking for an opportunity to replace you. Yeah, uh, Morgan II ruled with an iron fist. Holy shit. When you die, how do you hope the kingdom will remember you? Alright, so... Let's see here. Morgan I started off as a tyrant, but went with a faith victory. Morgan II tried to be a peacekeeper, uh, but that fell through. Patricians. And uh, he ended up becoming a tyrant during, over the course of basically a corruption arc. Uh, so you know what? His daughter, who was raised by a tyrant king, she wants to be remembered as a conqueror, greater than even her father before her. A warrior queen is sure to be remembered fondly, if she wins more battles than she loses. I suggest over the next few years you focus on improving the kingdom's overall military as much as possible. Once you have an heir, I will return to discuss how your ambition is progressing. Good luck, your majesty. Alright. So with that, we are at the end of the season. So, schemes. Barons, this one is going to be for you. We have Emmy of the Rising Phoenix 1997 bloodline. Legendary Marcher Orator, standing beneath before a blazing hearth, shouting and swearing. When have the barons of the march backed down from a fight? Never! I know you'll do what it takes to put me, your rightful queen, on the throne. Marchers, this is just for you. You get to vote on how you want to try to usurp the throne. Your options are sorcery, propaganda, or gunpowder. It's up to you. This is a Marcher Baron only vote. Hey, 
Ah, we're going for sorcery again. Let's go. Love a good bit of sorcery. Your predecessors were unsuccessful in trying to woo a wizard to take down Morgan the Second. We'll see how Morgan the Third fares. The Barons plan to make a bargain with a wizard. These immortal spellcasters seldom get involved in political squabbles, but perhaps if the Queen was considered a threat to their autonomy. To advance their scheme, the Barons must raise authority to five or more in two seasons. Scheme for the Chiefs. Gunhild of the Glen 149 clan, well-known northern prodigy, stands precariously on a longhouse crossbeam, droning as if in a trance. Chiefs of the North, we all know that I should be on the throne, not this imposter Queen Morgan III. How do we make that happen? Chiefs, this is a vote for you. You can either do an uprising, a prophecy, or go... Or try for Hornblower again. I know that was uh, what was decided on last time. <laughs> so, Glenn, this one is for you. You are our current chief. What is your plan to usurp the throne? Prophecy. <clears throat> Interesting. So, the marcher barons and the chiefs are going to be working together to spike my authority, apparently. Make me look like a tyrant. Like my father before me and my grandmother before that. <laughs> the chiefs plan to realize an ancient northern prophecy. Before the new queen rises, the kingdom will be ruled by a mad tyrant. That was my father. To advance their scheme, the chiefs must raise authority to five or more in two seasons. Okay. <clears throat> scheme for the patricians. Clovia of the T. Zeiton family, notorious coastal political fixer, scribbles with a well-used quill on a hardwood desk, explaining in measured prose. Fellow patricians of the coast, my claim to the throne is far more legitimate than that of Queen Morgan III. Something must be done. All right. What's it going to be, patricians? Your options are subterfuge, lower stability, Doppelganger, lower own defiance, or intimidation, raise stability. Can't stay long today. Gotta get up early tomorrow. That's fair, Vimur. I always appreciate you stopping by. And Vimur, you are back with the Barons. Alright, T. Zeiton, this one's all you. What scheme do you want to go for? We're going for Doppelganger again. Let's go. We've got schemes that were set up by the previous generations coming back to haunt me. Oh boy. The patricians plan to swap the real queen with a perfect doppelganger. First, they must gain the trust of the spymaster. To advance their scheme, the patricians must keep defiance at four or less in four seasons. Again, did I do this before? I think that was the previous scheme, wasn't it? <clears throat> or it might have been Morgan the First was going to be doppelgangered. We'll see. All right, so here we can see the status of the schemes. They're all just beginning. And warning, the monarch currently has no heir. Thought I went with Pezzamob. Yes, it was Uprising last time. That's what it was. Laws of the land. So we can either get Call to Unity, Royal Gamble, or Swing Votes. Let's see here. <clears throat> Plus one stability if more than 50% of nobles vote for any one option. Ooh, Okay. Royal Gamble, 600 treasury if the nobles vote for the selected option, otherwise minus 200. After voting, nobles can change their mind. I'll take Call for Unity. Alright. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, Morgan II uh, had a big problem managing his money, and so he may or may not have printed 10,000 coins since he, you know, controlled the Royal Mint. So we have a dynasty event here, which means an event that was caused by a previous event. So hyperinflation, uh, I think Morgan II's actions are uh, having consequences. Yeah. As your father ordered, your majesty, the royal mint has churned out thousands of new coins using cheap gold-like metals. The treasury is technically replenished. I sense a but coming. But it's also devaluing the currency across the kingdom. A loaf of bread co now costs a few hundred times what it used to. 
Something must be done. If this gets worse, our currency will be worthless. Trade is now destitute in the coast, which started off as the trade region. <laughs> oh, good lord. Alright. <clears throat> so, there's nothing wrong with this. Let it continue. Adopt an entirely new currency and declare the old one illegitimate. Or adopt a foreign currency instead. Ooh. Uh, let's see here. So, hmm. we're going to veto option A. So the vote will only be between B and C. My nobles, I leave it in your capable hands. Vote for what you believe is right. For those who are just coming in to join us, you can join with exclamation point to join, and then your preferred pronoun of he, she, or they. <clears throat> Ooh. The nobles were unanimous. We're adopting a foreign currency instead. I swear, if it's from the Isle of Saul, where Lord Killerman is, uh... Trading our sequence... You slowly adopt the currency of the Ashmedian Empire, resulting in kingdom-wide shame and loss of pride. Authority goes down! Let's go! <clears throat> and defiance is up! <laughs> Ashmedian gold is chunky and hexagonal, adorned with the sneering face of Emperor Shimarath II. It's a good thing most of your citizens can't read Ashmedian, because you're pretty sure each coin is inscribed with records of past military victories over your own kingdom. <laughs> memes all right and now the honor guard as is tradition each region offers a selection of elite guards the chiefs with their most famous warrior heroes the patricians with champion gladiators from the arena and the barons offer a squad of battle-hardened veteran soldiers think carefully your majesty these guards loyalties will be divided between you and their region of course you could just hire foreign mercenaries they'd be loyal to coin above all do you want my oily lads again? It was kind of funny having your, like, JoJo guys just, like, oiling themselves up behind the throne. Let's see here. Tell me about the Northern Warriors. Bearded oafs with axes and no manners. They'll get drunk and cause trouble in the palace. No discipline at all. I can't guarantee they won't run off on some random quest. But they're honorable and in a fight, unbeatable. Tell me about the Coastal Gladiators. Gang of lowborn crooks who've turned themselves into celebrities through their skill at chopping other people to bits. They're vain and selfish. Their skill in battle is undeniable, but can you trust them? Tell me about the veterans of the march. These soldiers have fought more battles than they've had hot dinners. They'll be uncouth, no doubt, and won't adapt well to life in the palace, but they're loyal and tough as nails. I made my decision. I await your verdict with bated breath, your majesty. And let's see here. We did have the Coastal Gladiators last time. The Northern Warriors have never been the Honor Guard. But I feel like I want to follow in the steps of the great Queen Morgan I. And so I will adopt the same Honor Guard as her, the Veterans of the March. I will make the arrangements at once. The veterans arrive a few weeks later. They march into the throne room in perfect formation before lining up behind your throne, hands on their sword hilts. Each soldier sports a bigger scar than the last. Let's go. It's the march. All right. A mysterious ship. Baron Vermeer III. My liege, a shipwreck has appeared on the edge of my estate, and it's not even from the march. Its name is the Petronella, and it bears a coastal flag. That vessel went missing a few months back. We feared she was lost at sea. Well, she's been found on land, right on top of my favorite picnic spot. My common folk discovered only one survivor on board, a coastal sailor. He claims to remember nothing of what happened. Ugh, my head's killing me. Has been ever since I woke up. So what happened to you? I swear, I didn't do anything. Last I remember, we were sailing along coastal waters, then... Nothing. 
This poor soul needs looking after. We must care for him in one of our monasteries. No, we must interrogate him further. I must know why this ship is on my land. So, we can either send the sailor to a monastery to convalesce in peace, pay a scholar to help him recover his memory, the Baron should hire adventurers to investigate the wreck, or leave the sailor to recover alone and the wreck to molder away. And I'll ask for a call for unity. Let's see what you can th think of. My nobles, I leave it in your capable hands. <laughs> this is why it happened. <laughs> All right, 10 seconds. Let thy will be known, my nobles. All right. <laughs> the barons were unanimous to leave the sailor to recover alone and the wreck to molder away. Okay. The patricians grumble amongst themselves, muttering about your lack of charity. The sailor is left to wander as he wishes, and you do not hear from him again. As news spreads about the bizarre reappearance of the Petronella, visitors come to the march to view the wreck. They arrive keen to spend money on overpriced tourist goods. Trade is now dominant. Yo, marcher lords? My trade lords? No one dares to get too close. Rumor has it that some visitors have gone missing after spending too long near the vessel. <clears throat> Alright, and that is that season. So, now we are in the auction phase. During this phase, you'll be able to type exclamation point fund XY, where X is the letter you, of the building you want to fund, and Y is how much money you want to give. You can see our richest nobles over on the right. I'll go ahead and pull up the noble list in case need be. And so, if you vote for something that affects the kingdom, such as authority or stability, that affects the kingdom stats over on the top left. If it is something such as, say, faith or trade, it affects your independent region. So, for example, I would want, say, the patricians to maybe consider uh, putting some money onto E, perhaps. Only the two most funded buildings will be built. You have a minute. <clears throat> Only the two most funded buildings will be built. And before I don't know what you want me to do, uh, put a hundred on like the fortress, maybe. Just that way it has something. <laughs> Or you could put a singular one, if no one else is intent to auction. <laughs> also, Foe, for this, it's going to be exclamation point fund A, and then the amount. Fund A number. <laughs> yeah, I'm dumb. Happens to the best of us. Also, for those who are just tuning in, because I see we've got a couple new viewers... If you would like, you can type exclamation point join, and then your preferred pronoun, and you can hop right on into the noble list. All right, it's between C and A at the moment. Two seconds remaining. Time is up. Hey, how's it going, killer man? All right, buildings funded. We've got the aqueduct, giving a bonus to farming. Main contributor was Chief Glen 149 and then the monument by the Rising Phoenix for 500. Team to the Rebellion Report. Alright. Uh, oh, yikes. Uh, so, the Barons and the Chiefs cannot rebel, but the Coast is so aggrieved that they could consider rebellion. However, they're not exactly militarily mighty. So you'll need two patricians to start a rebellion. If they want to, it would be voting with uh, exclamation point rebel. Alright. Finding a spouse. <coughs> Your Majesty, it's important you find a spouse sooner rather than later. I'll take the liberty of finding eligible candidates. What is your preference? Men, women, or do you not mind? Uh, let's mix it up. We, uh, we played, you know, hetero the two previous times, so, uh, women. Thank you, Your Majesty. I'll send out messengers to the most influential noble families in the kingdom. Let's see what they have to offer. It's time to be the lesbian barbarian queen. Let's do it. Morgan the Third going wild. Giant spiders. It's going made the mistake of slamming down a can of rain earlier today. Oh boy. Here lies my soup schedule. Yep. Alright. Chief Glenn 149. 
Your greatness. A forest on my land has been completely overrun by giant spiders. Some are as big as horses. The trees are shrouded in webs, and travelers are going missing. We must put a stop to this. So we can either send in the army to wipe them out, burn it, burn it with fire, put a bounty on giant spider legs, or we must learn to coexist with giant spiders. I'm going to veto coexisting, because peace was never an option. That said, it is now up to you. Why did it have to be spiders? Yeah, giant spiders in your land. Let's see here. The patricians are split between burn it with fire and putting a bounty on spider legs. <laughs> but I like spiders. I abstain. <laughs> but these are like giant horse-sized spiders. These are not like regular spiders. <laughs> All right. It's looking like we're sending in the army. 60% chance. Let me ride them into battle. <laughs> that would be something. All right, the three nobles voted for sending in the army to wipe them out. So this is a 60% army roll. The northern troops sweep into the shrouded woods, hacking down webs and killing any eight-legged creatures they come across. The operation is a major success. No significant losses, and soon the forest is empty of arachnid life. Soon, merchants are returning to the roads without worrying about being turned into spider food. Hey, let's go, everybody! All right. Vultures. Lord Patrician Killerman 0922 the second. Greed and marcher merchants are taking advantage of cheap coastal labor, your august majesty, exploiting our natural resources and putting our trading companies out of business. They're vultures. Vultures! Baron Vermeer. Is it really such a problem? This is just business. Lord Patrician Killerman 0922 the second's wealth has decreased. So we can either kick out the barons and put trading companies back in coastal hands, the queen will buy up the marcher trading companies, or it's just business, baby! <laughs> I leave it up to you, my nobles. What are we doing? What is the solution to the problem of the marcher merchants exploiting the coast? The chiefs want to kick out the barons and put trading companies back in coastal hands. Patricians also want to kick out the barons, but the barons want to say, it's just business, baby. <laughs> All right. There we go. <clears throat> Voting is closed. Three nobles voted to kick out the barons. Great God, trust me, those coastal fools will run my companies into the ground. Defiance is now aggrieved, and Baron Vermeer's wealth has decreased to zero. All the marcher companies in the coast are transferred to new ownership. Wine cellars, jewelers, gold mines, perfumeries. And it all goes to Lord Patrician Killerman 0922 the second. As the months pass, it becomes evident that Baron Vermeer was wrong. The companies continue to make a nice profit, and their new owner spreads the wealth all across the coast. Hey, let's go. Your trade is now struggling. <laughs> As opposed to destitute. <clears throat> all right. In the season, running these pockets. Far to the north, where snow blankets the landscape and wolves howl in the night, the chiefs uncover an ancient prophecy foretelling the rise of a tyrant queen and the warrior who will overthrow her. A congregation of god speakers huddle around the tablets, detailing the supposedly ancient story, whispering excitedly. Praise Morgana, the tablets are genuine! Then the gods are good, and we are blessed. Gunhild will be our queen. All hail the Lord Render. Cheers circle the clan hall. A mug of ale is tipped over Gunhild's head. The influence of the old gods is spreading. We must ensure we keep the old ways of the north alive, and surely Morgana will bless us with the power to crown Gunhild. For the next stage of the chief's scheme, they must lower their faith to four or less in four seasons. <laughs> I had them up at five with Morgan the second, but then they managed to take it back down. 
In the march, Baroness, the Rising Phoenix 1997, stands atop a border fort, flanked by soldiers glaring out over the Ashmedian territory with a scowl. Below, a portcullis rattles open. A twisted stone figure is carried into the fortress. Not Gordius again! Born on a palanquin carried by hollowed-eyed apprentices, the Baroness goes down to meet him. For those who don't know, uh, Gordius was a wizard that we summoned to deal with the Stone Maiden in, during the reign of Morgan I. However, she spited Gordius and refused to sacrifice her tooth for the sake of her people, and many were slaughtered by the Stone Maiden as Gordius was unable to complete his spell. Then, during the reign of Morgan II, the barons tried to get in contact with Gordius to uh, overthrow <laughs> that king, and now Gordius is back in the reign of Morgan III. Well, I have taken time out of my very busy schedule to come and meet you in this pimple of a fort on the backside of nowhere. I thought we might have a common goal. Save your breath. I already know what you want from me. Assistance in overthrowing the current queen. Am I right? Well, I Was it that obvious? I was born a long time before yesterday, my good Baroness. And unlike some of my more isolated colleagues, I'm no stranger to political machinations. On this occasion, our goals happen to align, but I cannot act on your behalf, not until the bees are taken care of. Did you say bees? Yes. On this plane, they're simple insects, but in the apiary, the world of dreams and magic, they're powerful and intelligent, call themselves the dreams of being. They have an innate fondness for royalty, and sometimes protect monarchs from magical interference. But they won't harm non-magic folk beyond the occasional sting, so you can deal with them. For the next stage of their scheme, the barons must lower all regions combined farming to 14 or less in four seasons. <laughs> a bee? <laughs> yep, you want to kill the bees. All right, that said, tax time. Uh, let's see here. So the patricians are not mighty enough that they could really win a rebellion. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> What? Yeah, it's the bees. He, the wizard needs you to kill the bees. Because in, you know, like the Feywild, they're like super powerful, even if they're just like insects here. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Tax time. Uh, patricians are the only ones that can currently rebel. But they also only have a military might of two, compared to the three and five of the marchers and the chiefs. I'll happily take bribes and leave my pockets alone. Ah, and one thing I forgot to mention is the trade bonus. Uh, the trade bonus occurs during the tax season, and you are more likely to have your region get the trade bonus the higher your trade is. So the chiefs got it this time. After a skirmish with ice giants, the chiefs loot 500 wealth, and the other nobles gain 200 wealth. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. So I could see about bribing the patricians, maybe. Uh, don't tax us for goodness sake. I know, I don't want to tax the march. Jeez, uh, this defiance is already rough. <clears throat> Alright. Hmm. Well, I mean, the patricians, you know, they're already, like, pretty, uh, pretty adamant against me. 
you know, they have the ability to rebel, but they won't yet. Also, thank you, Solid, uh, oh, Solid Yindors. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Let's see here. Uh, keeping the patricians complacent. Well, let's also keep the patricians poor, shall we? Magaseos. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. We're too weak. We're not threatening. Okay, okay. We'll leave you on the common tax for now. We'll just common tax everyone. And we'll deal with other things later. <clears throat> the expedition returns. Wait. Are we talking about... This isn't marked as a dynasty event, but uh, the expedition was something that we started during the reign of Morgan II. Chiefs, how are we doing? Uh, they're doing pretty all right. Their goal is to keep their faith at four or less for the prophecy. This, the faith used to be 10-5-10 during the reign of the second king, but uh, they went with Hornblower. Is your farming is rough? Yeah. So the expedition returns. Your Majesty, most excellent news. The expedition that your predecessor, King Morgan II, sent to Chur has finally returned, and they've brought a boatload of riches with them. Riches? What kind? A crate full of dazzling gold coins is wheeled into the room. Strange emblems from a long-forgotten kingdom are carved under their faces. You see, Dad warned me about this because we put it in the vault, and then he f suddenly found himself with 400 gold. What's the catch? I'm not sure what you mean, Your Highness. It's gold! Free gold! What's there to worry about? It's too risky. Dispose of it. Y Your Majesty, did I hear you correctly? You want me to dispose of untold piles of gold? Do as I say. You send a flotilla to have the gold dumped unceremoniously into the ocean. Half the kingdom thinks you're mad, The more, than <laughs> and more than a bit of it goes missing in transit. One ship never comes back. It's fine. <clears throat> it's fine. Also, here's the noble list, so that way we can see our spread of nobles that we currently have. And for those who are just now getting in with us, you can uh, join with exclamation point join, and then your preferred pronoun. Alright. So, we decided we were going to be the uh, lesbian barbarian queen this time, because we played it straight, uh, no pun intended, the previous two times. I have found three potential matches for you. One eligible young woman from each of the kingdom's three regions. Choose wisely, you'll be securing a powerful alliance. And a partner for life, to have and to hold, don't forget. Indeed, your majesty. The chancellor leads you to the great hall, where they've arranged three portraits on easels. For now, each is covered by a cloth. All right, then. Let's see these eligible bachelorettes. They whisk away the cloth from the first portrait. This is Frida. Firstborn daughter of the northern Solid Yundos clan. She's been a melancholy sort ever since she was a child, but otherwise, she's decent enough company. She works through her sadness on the battlefield, going into berserk rages. She's an incredibly driven person by all accounts, gets up at the crack of dawn each morning, and goes for a swim in a frozen lake. I can see the appeal, I suppose. From the coast, we have Dominica the wealthy heiress to the Lord Patrician Killerman 0922 II's estate. I mean, just look at her. She's gorgeous, and apparently she's got a silver tongue, too. She loves to go hunting, which is a common hobby among the Patricians. There was also a scandal recently where she was publicly critical of the church. Nothing came of it. I like the sound of her. And finally, we have the March's offering. Johanna, scion of the prestigious Vermeer bloodline. And you can be sure she'll tell you all about how prestigious her bloodline is. She's a zealous follower of the Ninth God, able to quote scripture backwards and forwards, and at volume. Oh, and she's, uh, not popular with the peasantry. Something about her sets their teeth on edge. Sounds like a laugh. What do you think? Of course, by picking a candidate, you'll anger the other regions, but you'll gain a lifelong alliance. <clears throat> Ooh. So we've got, we've got nice church girl. Well, maybe not necessarily nice, but we've got better than you and knows it church girl, Joanna. We've got <clears throat> the depressed berserker GF, Frida. Or we have the elusive tan tomboy GF from the coast. She's gorgeous, and apparently she loves to go hunting. 
Tan Tomboy GF. I've made my decision. <clears throat> We're going with Go North, she's lonely. I want, I want a church girl. <laughs> Tomboy, yeah. I can't deny. The coast put up a hell of a hell of an offer. Well, they all did, truly. Let's see here. Morgan the first married Lascal of the North. Morgan the second married Tabeka of the March. And let's mix it up. We'll go with the tan tomboy GF from the coast. Excellent. I'll make the arrangements. Defiance now goes down to insolent. <laughs> Defiance is now aggrieved. Defiance is now mutinous. <laughs> Lesbarian. I <laughs> just noticed that. <laughs> Rejecting my daughter. I'm sorry, Solid Yendors. But I can't deny. I got quite the rarity from the coast. <laughs> Caps in the mind. Baron Vimur the third. Your Majesty, I have some odd news to report. You look as though you've seen a ghost. Ever since the wreck of the Petronella was found on my land, people have been losing their memory. It started small, but it's spreading. And I woke up this morning to find I'd lost a week of my life. Something is deeply wrong. Our, our two military is legit only peasants, but they can get real annoying when irritated. <laughs> uh, memes. <clears throat> so... Hmm. We can either pay to uh, relocate the Baron to safety, send priests to heal the people, destroy the ship, and I am vetoing calling Baron Vimmer the third delusional. I still feel bad about how my father killed his father. That said, my nobles, it is now up to you. <clears throat> Ten seconds remain. The barons want to relocate their fellow baron, it seems. Pull up the noble lists, so that way we can see how people are divided. <clears throat> Two, one. Mm. Pretty, pretty solidly going for uh, A there. We will pay for Baron Vimur the third to relocate to safety. Thanks to the generosity of the council, the household of Baron Vimur the third is officially moved. The area is left to crumble as people are too fearful to explore it any further. <clears throat> All right. That is the end of the season. So, we've now got the end of the year. If nobles vote for the monarch's choice, they gain 500 personal wealth. Interesting. So, if there's one thing I found is that this tooltip is no longer accurate. This is how this used to work. However, now the option has to win in order for you to get the 500 personal wealth. I'm going to replace my Monarch's Vote with my Monarch's Golden Choice. <clears throat> and we've got a Dynasty event, so I'm going to go and check that out. A new book. The Archbishop walks into your office and places a bottle of wine on your desk. Your Majesty, a monk in the coast by the name of Gildafreth has been writing a history of the kingdom. His assessment of your predecessor on the throne is full of praise. Since you're King Morgan II's direct heir, this makes you look good, too. So, no downsides? No downsides. I'll leave you to enjoy your wine, Your Majesty. But yeah, we actually set that up Yeah, during the reign of uh, King Morgan II. That's fun. I'll be going to sleep. Good luck, folks. See you sometime. Hey, have a good night, Vimmer. The Royal Wedding. Your wedding to Dominica is, naturally, the talk of the kingdom. Nobles and peasants alike travel from across the realm to attend. For a week and a day, the capital is one giant party. It feels like you're the only one not taking part. Instead, you're getting ready for the ceremony. 
Soon enough, you're standing at St. Bertrand's Cathedral with Dominica at your side. Do you take this woman as your lawfully wedded wife? I do. Then I pronounce you queen and wife. After the wedding, of course, there's a feast. And after the feast, a dance. Your new wife, Dominica, laps up the attention, delivering a witty speech in which she flatters you outrageously. By the time you find yourself alone with Dominica, it's past midnight, and you've never felt more tired. You danced so very beautifully. It was such a wonderful day, wasn't it? I admit your heart wasn't in it. This shocks her at first, and then she smiles. Me neither. Still, I suppose it's the game we must play. Let's drop the act, shall we? With pleasure. Well, what should we talk about? I'm so used to steering a conversation into safe waters, I've forgotten how to let it run its natural course. Just tell me what you're most passionate about. Why, hunting, of course. There's something so primal, so rewarding, about eating a dinner you caught yourself. And she was in a bit of controversy at one point for talking about on the church, so... The Archbishop's a pompous old fool, isn't he? From there, the conversation flows like fine wine. Let's go! <laughs> you pass a bottle back and forth, joking about the greedy nobles and the self-righteous archbishop. At night's end, you join your wife in bed, feeling for the first time that you've glimpsed her real feelings. Let's go, baby! A win for lesbians everywhere. <laughs> yep. Also, no more spiders. Chief Glen 149. Your Majesty, a forest on my lands has been completely overrun by giant flies. The giant spiders must have been the only thing keeping them in check. They're huge and horrible and buzzing around all across the north. Perhaps we should have left those spiders alone. You think? My crops are being eaten. Disease is running rampant. Something must be done. <laughs> so we can either set massive fires across the north to smoke them out, hire a wizard to deal with it, Trap them with honey, or the chiefs will just have to learn to live with it. I am vetoing hiring a wizard. I have had enough wizard nonsense with Gordius in the reign of Morgan the First, and now two times he has been contacted to bring down other Morgans. All right, up to you, my nobles. <laughs> Let thy will be known. T. Zeiten wanting to burn down the north. <laughs> the chiefs and another patrician wanting to trap them with honey. And the barons staying very quiet and reserved out of this vote. Alright. <clears throat> I see you, barons. Your plan goes off without a hitch. Honey is spread across the fields, and when the fe and when the flies land to feast, your waiting archers riddle them with arrows. It takes a lot of arrows and a lot of honey, but it's excellent practice for your archers, and eventually the fly infestation is back under control. Let's go! Defiance is now grumbling, and military is now strong. Baron's playing the long game, yeah. Though it might have just been easier to, though it might have been easier just to leave the spiders alive. <laughs> It's fine. <clears throat> what could have gone wrong? Seeking a simulacrum. The coast. Anchored a few miles away from the sunny coast, Lord Patrician T. Zeiten has invited his closest confidants aboard his yacht. You said you had a surprise for me. Indeed, and here it is. Behold. Y your Majesty, w what are you doing here at such an hour? I'm sorry, I, I hope you didn't overhear any. <laughs> Quit babbling, you blowhard. This isn't the Queen. It's a peasant who's the Queen's spitting image. Remarkable. And just in time. The spymaster trusts us so much that she's not noticed that we're refitting civilian vessels into battleships. The military is now adequate. That means we can move to the next phase. Kidnapping the queen and putting this fool in her place. How do we manage that? We need the kingdom to be in utter chaos. Bad enough that the queen's abduction can slip past unnoticed. God, they're inciting the peasants again. <clears throat> 
For the next stage of their scheme, the patricians must lower stability to four or less in four seasons. All right. Everyone is on stage two of their scheme, and warning. The monarch currently has no heir. Yeah, that's, uh, that happens sometimes, you know? <coughs> Back from the hunt. Morgan, dearest, I have something for you. It's something I brought back from my latest hunt, a trophy. Dominica takes you by the hand and leads you into the Great Hall, where a white sheet hangs from some statue that wasn't there before. When she pulls the sheet free, it falls to the floor. The taxidermy figure of a great brown bear is revealed, snarling in anger as if ready to attack. Hey, we've got one of these in the council room. Uh, Tebeka, my... my mother. She was also a huntress. <laughs> Fearsome. This would be perfect for instilling some fear into the nobles. The bear makes a fine addition to the council's chambers. Your nobles give it a nervous glance every time they enter the room. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> also, we are still having issues with farming in the march, barons. <laughs> Love language taxidermy bears. Yup. Baron Mag Magosios. Your Highness, or Baroness Magesios, Your Highness, the famine in the march grows worse by the day. Riots are breaking out in all major townships, from Kellenberg to, Z to Zerbina Zerbimar. Starving mobs are pillaging bakeries, granaries, and merchant houses. What are we to do? Stability goes down to staple. <coughs> Ouch. So we can either send in the army to control the riots, import massive amounts of food from Tavalin and Kurth, the barons should buy up surplus grain from the chiefs, or order grain supplies to be diverted from the north. Hmm. So, my barons, I know that it would hurt you financially to have to buy up things from the chiefs. So, in an effort to subsidize, I will provide the monarch's golden choice should you vote for C. My barons, Magesios, the rising phoenix, I leave this in your hands, as well as all other nobles of my council. <clears throat> How shall we deal with the food crisis? I love money. Doesn't everyone? Makes the world go round. <laughs> Barons. Ah, I was about to say, they were remaining very quiet and out of it. Voting is closed. Alright, the Baron should buy up surplus grain from the Chiefs. Free tax write-off? Yeah. <laughs> Backed into a corner, the Barons are forced to pay steeply for the grain surplus from the North. Holding all the cards, the Chiefs price gouge outrageously and enjoy a tidy profit. So some Barons' wealth has decreased, some Chiefs' wealth has increased... And uh, even with my subsidy, the barons are still hurting for money. Oof. <clears throat> Don't be upset. It's just good business. Immense quantities of surplus grain are diverted from the north to the march. Once the peasants have bread again, the riots cease. There's enough to tide them over until the next harvest. Farming is now needful. <laughs> Let's go! All right, and your distant cousin, Baron Vimmer III. Your Highness, I have a matter of some delicacy to speak with you. Good day, cousin. How's the old kingdom going, eh? I always thought it looked like a lot of work, but I suppose you get a fancy hat. Lord Fitzalbert is your very, very distant cousin. About 50th in line to the throne. You haven't seen him in years. Good day to you both. Lord Fitzalbert has been staying at my estate for the last year, my liege. But unfortunately, there have been some financial impacts. He's been borrowing money from me for months, saying he'll pay me back when his luck turns. But now my coffers are bare. Yeah. Yes, yes, poor Vimmer the Third couldn't even afford a little banquet to see me off. I'm sorry it's come to this, but I must petition the court for funds, my liege. 
So, we're going to either pay Baron Vermeer for his hospitality, leave Lord Fitzalbert to sort this out himself, or Lord Fitzalbert should be put up in the palace. We're not putting Lord Fitzalbert in the palace. I'm sorry. Unless by put up, you mean in my dungeons. <laughs> but I don't think that's what it means, so I don't want him in my palace. <laughs> I leave it to you, my nobles. What shall we do on behalf of Baron Vermeer the Third? <clears throat> so far, we got an even split. We got an, our marcher Baron, Rising Phoenix, making her will known. Ten seconds left to get your votes in. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. Lord Fitzalbert. Leave Lord Fitzalbert to sort this out himself. Lord Fitzalbert storms out in a noisy huff. Still, at least the treasury is safe from your cousin's grasp. Defiance is now insolent. It's fine. In the season. All right. So, we are back to auction time. So... Again, for those who don't know, it's exclamation point fund XY, where X is the letter of the building and Y is how much. So fund A100 is the format, essentially. Start auction. You have a minute. Vote for what you like. And uh, my dear chiefs, if we can get a military building such as that fortress, I may be inclined to not tax you so heavily this coming tax season. Let's see here. 30 seconds remaining. C and E. Ooh. A has been forced out. No more Deer Park. Wait. <laughs> Wait a minute. The parents of the marsh are trying to lower their, their farming. That's hilarious. Keep it low. I suppose it makes sense. All right, we got 10 seconds. C at 2,000, E at 1,581. E jumping up with a big last minute donation and time is up. <clears throat> All right, buildings funded are the prison and the fortress. Solid Yandors contributing 2,000 of their own wealth. All right that we are at the end of that let's see here pagan prophecies the northern chiefs god speakers have uncovered an ancient prophecy let me guess you think it's all fake of course it's fake nothing those pagan gods could have ever said or done is real this is but one of countless myths used to justify the behavior of immature heathens what she means to say is the chief's plan to use the prophecy to justify unseating you. True or not, many northerners believe it. Oh, ninth above. Quite. The prophecy tells of an authoritarian queen who was overthrown by a northern warrior. The savior of the pagans, known by names such as the Thronebreaker, the Sword of Valtor, or the Lord Render. That's you, by the way. The authoritarian queen. Not the Lord Render. The prophecy calls for the collapse and death of all false gods, including the Ninth, whom Nelkis will lead into a bubbling cauldron disguised as a magical pond. This is sounding very heretical. Worse than heresy, Your Majesty. It's a lie. We must strengthen the church in the North. Besides falsifying their prophecy, it might even save a few misguided Northerner souls. The pagans still blindly worship their old gods, however. If we don't act soon, the kingdom will be lost. So we can either order priests to go north and decry the prophecy as false, invent a counter-prophecy to delay the scheme for one season, or allow the prophecy to spread. No one will ever believe it anyway. Now then, my barons and my patricians, I know that... We have had some disagreements in the past, but I believe that it would help if we can see about decrying these prophecies as false, and I am more than happy to offer a small tax write-off for those who can make it happen. All right. <clears throat> 
Let your will be known, my nobles. It's two to two at the moment. We got Monarch's Golden Choice on A, and then we got B and C. All right. The patricians and the barons working together to order priests to the north. I'm not sure if it'll be enough. We need to get it to, like, what, four or five faith? Which I don't think is going to happen, but... Maybe. <clears throat> oh, shit. Everywhere gain faith. The Archbishop mobilizes the priesthood. Emergency sermons are held in every church across the kingdom, warning the faithful to stay vigilant against pagan lies. <laughs> Stability is now unstable. Authority is now commanding. Faith goes up everywhere. Catholic thinking. <laughs> Wait, sorry, Northerners, we speak in commerce. Hundreds of priests are sent up north to preach to the local populace, which naturally causes tensions with the chiefs. You hope it will be enough. All right. About your heir. Your marriage to Dominica has grown strong and steady, like an old castle wall. Though began as political arrangement, it's blossomed into something more like love. It's high time you thought about an heir. Congratulations are in order. The royal wedding was a magnificent affair. But something's still missing. You need an heir. You need someone young, whose loyalty is assured. A child of your own would do the trick, even if they're a bastard. Or the youngest of your many cousins. My wife and I will have a child together. That's an option. <laughs> pretty sure I have a bastard child lying around somewhere. You, you're pretty sure? Make my youngest cousin my heir, or I plan to adopt a lowborn child from the orphanage. My wife and I will have a child together. Let's go. Ah. The traditional method. No one will object to that. I'll arrange for you to take a month off from ruling so you can <clears throat> get down to business. Thank you, Chancellor. <laughs> Let's go! A bizarre report. Your Majesty, I have received worrying reports. Worrying and confusing. Let me help you out. What's wrong? I've received reports that one of my little birdies in Lord Patricia T. Zeiton's villa, he has a most unusual guest. Oh no, is this some kind of parasite thing? Um, no. It's you, your majesty, or someone who looks just like you. I have no reason to suspect the patricians of plotting anything, and yet I can't square this away. Unfortunately, I can't devote too many resources to solving this puzzle with the kingdom in such a lamentable state, too busy fighting fires elsewhere. I recommend you call a meeting of the council and try to do something to put a stop to this. Very well. Assemble them at once. So. Let's see. We can either do nothing, conduct a thorough search of the coastal villas, or triple security around the palace. What a surprise package. <laughs> Alright. I have to veto doing nothing. I feel like, anyway. Ah. Uh, Jeez, everywhere is burning. We're behaving, I promise. Then surely you won't mind behaving for one extra season at least. That said, I leave it up to you, my nobles. Looks like the chiefs are voting to delay it for one season. We got the Baroness, the Rising Phoenix, voting to triple security around the palace. Patricians seem to be sitting out. Ooh, T. Zeiton jumping in. To go ahead and delay for a season. They're making sure we don't triple security. <laughs> Fair enough. Voting has closed. He's better for lowering stability. If Hey, if stability hits zero, we all lose. Except for the rebels, if there are any. You send your best knights to kick down doors and rampage through coastal villas, searching for your doppelganger. Defiance goes up. Doesn't accomplish much except ticking off the patricians. If this doppelganger exists, she's been moved to a safe location. But at least you've bought yourself some time. You've hampered the patricians' efforts. Their stat goal will not be evaluated until the end of next season. Speaking of, end of season. Voltor is chosen. Far to the north, an ancient ceremony in a smoky clan hall reaches a fever pitch. Gunhild, the chief's claimant, sits atop a throne of bones surrounded by godspeakers chanting in a forgotten tongue. 
And thus, with Morgana as my witness, I hereby crown you the Queen in the North, the Lord Render, soon to be Queen of all the kingdom. Glory to the Lord Render, chosen of Valtor. Glory to Morgana and the North. The assembled chiefs roar in chorus with each other. Steins are smashed against one another in celebration. Now, we must bring down the false queen in the south and fulfill the prophecy. The question is, how? So, you can either lure the queen to the north and sacrifice her in a pagan ritual, lower her own defiance, or sacrifice thousands of goats to the old gods and call upon them to intervene. Raise own farming, which is already at 10. So in other words, it'll be like maintain 10. Fair enough. That's it, Chiefs 1. Not yet they haven't. You have to screw them over, t Zitan. You specifically. You must do all in your power to lower their farming. So it will be. Send out the word. Every citizen of the land must provide a goat for the butchering. But first we drink in honor of the gods. Oh, wait, that was... Wait, that was Frida. That was <laughs> that's his daughter who wanted to be my wife. Uh oh, she's plotting openly now. You personally have to burn our crops. Yep. More cheers are up through the clan hall. Come morning, there's a lot of work to do. For the final stage of their scheme, the chiefs must keep their farming at ten for one full season. Yike! Speaking of the dreams of being, the uh, the marchers want to lower that collective farming. Down in the march, Baroness the Rising Phoenix, 1997, is visiting the wizard Gordius in his tower of black basalt. Lava bubbles and cracks in the stone, somehow flowing uphill. Last night, as I slept, I walked through the glittering halls of the apiary. And do you know what I saw? Vast, crystalline palaces. Dream queens upon shimmering thrones. The hives go from strength to strength. What happened to our deal, you fool? Am I dealing with an incompetent? But please, just give me a few more months. By the ninth, I won't let you down. See that you don't. Those who waste my time quickly discover that the seven hells hold no torments like an irritated wizard. The Baron's aim is to lower all regions combined farming to 14 or less. All right, Barons, Patricians, it's got to happen. We got to, we got to, you know, tax them, you know, tax them chiefs a little. We got to tax their farming, to clarify. I made a deal where I wouldn't tax them so heavily. That said, the rest of you, I may need to tax a little. Let's see. The chiefs invest wisely in local breweries, making 500 wealth. The other nobles gain 200 wealth. I have no problem with the chiefs. Hey. T-Zite. <clears throat> T-Zite, this is why I have to cruel tax you. You are going to fight the chiefs. You need to. <laughs> Though perhaps something a little less cruel would be more convincing for you. You know what? No. I like crops. How about this? I think this should be more agreeable. Slide an extra 700 wealth your way. <clears throat> Peasants feed? Oh, please don't flag me for that, mods. Uh-oh. What did you say? I have an auto-moderator. You know what? I'll, I'll allow that message personally. There we go. I, for one, support your weird queen fetish. <laughs> My auto-moderator caught that for me. And it was pending approval. It has been approved. <clears throat> So, Baroness Phoenix, can your pockets be greased? Can we work together to prevent the successful butchering of goats? 
What do you say? Yeah, I guess. So be it. <clears throat> do not forget the favors I've done you. Now then, we need to lower the farming. I can be bribed. <laughs> Roving hunters. <clears throat> Your Majesty, two barons are on their way home from an epic hunt and seek shelter for the night. In exchange, they're willing to gift you a rare trophy, provide meat for an extravagant feast, if you so wish. Tell me more about these barons. Their names are Vermeer III and the Rising Phoenix, 1997. As for this particular hunt, it's an ancient marcher tradition, something about trekking to all four corners of the kingdom to claim a bounty from the great animal spirits. Bring them in and set the tables. The table is set for a delectable feast. Though your wife doesn't join you, your company, the company of the two barons, you enjoy the company of the two barons while the storm rages outside. The meat they provide is said to come from their latest kill, Hortusk, an ancient boar the size of a castle. You're not sure if you believe their story, but it certainly tastes better than anything you've had for a long time. Later that night, you hear strange noises coming from their quarters, like a, sque like a pig squealing and snorting. What on saddest oath did they bring in here? Investigate the noise. You creep down the corridors and push open the door. The former barons stand before you, transformed into hideous porcine beasts that stand on two legs, with snouts, tusks, and floppy pink ears. Your Majesty, don't look at us! What the devil is wrong with you? It was the meat, my liege. We hunted and butchered an ancient, legendary beast. We were told it was cursed, but... We were also told devouring the beast, the spirits of the forest itself, would bestow great power. We've never thought this would be our reward. Don't worry. I'll keep your secret. Thank you, Your Majesty. A thousand thanks. We think the transformation is temporary, but it may return in the future. Not to worry. We'll find ourselves a cure when we get back to the march. If anyone finds you, this meeting never happened. They nod furtively and scramble out of the room. Next morning, you part ways with the barons who look like ordinary humans again. It's not obvious if the curse was temporary or if it's merely hidden during the day. You think back to last night's feasts. They thank you for your hospitality, gifting you some of their hunting trophies, including the barbed tail of a fearsome northern wyvern known as Sky Darkener. Hey, treasury goes up. <clears throat> All right. Please give us an event. You're complaining, cousin. No. My cousin's going to bite me in the ass because we won't get an event. We need to lower that farming. Interesting news from the march. Do all your family reunions go this well? Is my cousin causing trouble again? You could say that. Lord Fitzalbert has decided to tell everyone that you're unwilling to give someone of your own blood funds on which to survive. It's stirring up bad feelings against you. Better to nip this in the bud before it gets out of control. So we can either have the queen formally apologize, pay the barons to put him up, or officially reprimand him for his insolence. <clears throat> I leave it in your capable hands, my nobles. But me not dealing with my cousin sooner may have actually cost me the game. Because I don't think we have an event. We have one event left, which is the songstress. And I'm not sure if we can use it to harm the farming. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> oh, you're fine, solid. All good. I have no problems. It's just auto moderation. Because I uh, I don't have mods yet. Soon, though. You send a stern letter to Lord Fitzalbert, chiding him for his behavior. You do not hear anything back yet. Perhaps he changed his ways. I don't think we can use this to harm farming. This might be GG. <clears throat> Chief Glen 149. Your Majesty, a bard who calls herself the Songstress has been making waves in the north. Performances are attracting huge crowds, so huge that there have been brawls and stampedes as people push closer to the stage. There have been no deaths yet, but it's only a matter of time. With every concert, the riots get worse. What can we do to nip this in the bud? <clears throat> Crap. 
<sighs> this might be GG. We'll see. I'll leave it up to you, my nobles. We'll see how this goes. Not a matter for the council's attention. Yike! <clears throat> How much is stability gonna drop? Defiance is now mutinous. Very well. I suppose we'll just let the bard continue to stir up chaos on my lands. Over the next few weeks, the riots about the songstress's shows get worse. There are several deaths. What is so special about this woman's music? End season. <clears throat> Planning an abduction. Somewhere along the coast, Lord Patrician T. Zeiton strolls in his olive grove, accompanied by a close friend. The kingdom's in complete chaos. The peasants are so nervous, they're joining the army in droves, so someone will give them a sword. It's perfect! We have to strike! What do you intend us to do? Swoop in and kidnap the queen in full view of the honor guard and the palace watch? No, of course not. We need to use the chaos to our advantage. We have two options. Patricians of the coast. You can either lure the queen to the coast and abduct her there, raise own defiance, or manufacture a food crisis and kidnap the queen during the relief efforts. Lower own farming. <clears throat> Ten seconds. Vote B. There it is. All right. We're going to manufacture a food crisis. Lower own farming. If the coast is gripped with famine, we can convince the queen to come and visit us. Kiss babies, hand out bread, that sort of thing. That's when we strike. One queen rides to the coast, and another queen rides home. Your genius knows no bounds. But what about our own citizens? Won't they starve? You know what they say. You can't make an omelette without starving a few peasants. For the final stage of their scheme, the patricians must lower their farming to three or less. Ah, <clears throat> oh, jeez. I'm going to keep my current stuff, honestly. Shit. Well, there's only one event this season. The storm comes. Over the past few months, you've noticed strange weather patterns. Flash floods, terrible storms, the lot of it. And now, even though you're well into spring, the winter's chill hasn't let go. If anything, it's gotten colder. Soon, the landscape is blanketed by snow. You've never seen anything like it. Depths below, I've never seen such a storm. This is an ill omen. Why is this happening? Who can say? Perhaps the work of a warlock. Or even a wizard? When your advisors finally assemble to discuss the blizzard, they each have differing opinions on the matter. <clears throat> we need to secure what food we can for the palace, in case this gets any worse. Damn what the peasants say about tyranny. I'll take care of them if they try anything. We cannot set off the common folk in a time like this. Perhaps the spymaster could leverage her contacts to uncover the source of this unnatural cold. This is an act of God, make no mistake. I warned you there would be consequences for letting the church's influence wane. The warmth of his love has left us. I need solutions and plans, people, not speculation. Um, sincerest apologies, your majesty. I'm sure we have plenty of options to... Just then, a member of the watch rushes into the room, waving her arms around and screaming loudly, An army! An army from the north! The watch better not be drinking on the job again. Horns blare in the distance. The deep, thunderous war horns of the chiefs. Your advisors look at each other in confusion, then dread. You sprint to the city battlements, your honor guard and advisors in tow. The wind howls, whipping snow into your eyes. A gigantic heathen army approaches, 
northern warriors, scantily clad despite the cold, and hulking, beast-like monsters of various shapes and sizes, Faith is now heathen. What are those beasts? But no one has time to answer before the horns sound again. The army surges forward, a guttural war cry on every chief's lips. We have to get you to safety, your highness. We're not prepared for an attack like this. Your marshal grabs your hand and pulls you away from the wall. Moments later, you're trudging down money streets, trying not to lose her. But the city is filling with panicking peasants, and the blizzard is worsening. You can't see more than a few feet in front of you. Where are my honor guard? Your shouts are lost on the wind. Behind you, there's a deep, creaking groan as the capital's main gate collapses. You wander and shout until it seems the storm is turning you around on purpose. Inevitably, the northern warriors fill the streets. Chief Glynn 149 is the first to find you, tired and muddy and completely alone. What do you want from me, you heathens? A terrifying roar is your only reply, as the unmistakable form of a white werewolf towers over Chief Glen 149. Likewise, the chief looks down on you with an almost bestial snarl. Chalith awaits, crooked queen. He gestures flippantly. The beast barrels you to the ground with ease, eager to feast on its prey. As was foretold, you met your inevitable fate thanks to the chief's prophecy scheme. Queen Morgan III died in agony, torn apart by a werewolf and a calamity that would become known as the Night of Frost. The attempt to woo Gordius to the Marcher cause was doomed to failure. Eventually, the wizard, bored of these mortal quabbles, burned Baroness the Rising Phoenix to a crisp with one well-placed fireball. All that remained of the patrician's attempts to usurp the crown was a prisoner, deep under the palace, clad in an iron mask, and shrouded in rumor. The capital was buried in snow, as Gunhild, the Lord Render, led her army of monsters to slaughter her enemies and seize the throne for the chiefs. The power of the old gods could never be denied again. Well played, chiefs. I won the previous two, and I was bound to slip up eventually. I wanted to try for a conquest, raise the military, but didn't happen. <clears throat> All right. Queen Morgan III, Stormfearer. Spouse, Dominica of the Coast. Successor, Queen Gunhild. Nobles, wealthiest noble, Chief Glen 149. Poorest noble, solid endorse. <laughs> Kingdom. Kingdom stats, stability six, or authority six, stability two, treasury four thousand and fifty. Oof. Fair enough. <laughs> the old gods reward us. Patience in time. Yeah, that was literally a victory for the chiefs. Like two or three streams coming, because Queen Morgan the first became a living saint. And forced every region to 10 faith, basically. It was 10, 5, and 10. Chiefs had 5 faith given to them. And then during the reign of Morgan II, that faith was lowered to 0. And then finally, the prophecy came to fruition during the reign of Morgan III. Brutal. It's very little we actually had to do. Yeah, you had everything set up from careful planning i'm sure from previous streams <laughs> glenn 149 played the long game across multiple lifetimes <laughs> building up his farming lowering his faith <laughs> masterfully executed so if i was to hit continue game we would actually pick up with queen gunhild of the morgan dynasty interesting <clears throat> the coast almost succeeding twice in a row yeah that was a close one. And that was another uh, another Marcher Baron burned by Gordius. <laughs> We're just some comedic relief faction. <laughs> nah. Nah, you guys are definitely a threat. You almost won the last one. Then again, so did the Barons. You both were on like the final stage of your scheme uh, during Morgan II's reign. It was just uh, Morgan II managed to get a 60% authority roll and was able to secure power. But yeah, fair enough. Ah, that was surprisingly quick compared to how long we usually run. We usually go for like another like hour and a bit. 
Uh, let's see here. Well, I do have other things that I should be getting to, but I will let the Chiefs bask in their victory. Victory was so close, yet we taste the bitterness of defeat. Yep, it is like that sometimes, patrician killer man. No problem, I only chose the path of the funny. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that prophecy worked out pretty nice. That was set up lifetimes in advance, unintentionally, I think. High farming, low faith. Glenn is the power, I was just here. <laughs> He's the mastermind. You were uh, the extra voting muscle. <laughs> also, Glenn, can we talk about you being richest noble two games in a row, despite me not bribing the chiefs? You had so much money. <laughs> I was save loading in past lives. <laughs> it was all a genius ploy. <laughs> all right. Well, I can't deny I am tempted to play Queen Gunhild for the uh, for the next one. Part of me is also thinking about for the next stream we do a new dynasty because we do still need to have. Let's just go ahead and default to Morgan Morgan. Sure, Morgan Ma Morgan. Because I want to, uh, I want to do some with the two other factions. We haven't made use of the Counts of the East or the Grandees of the South very much. So the real question would be, <coughs> pardon me, what faction we want to have be our third faction? Because Spartan does want to start a uh, a new one with those two factions, just because I don't see them very much. But I guess we'll go ahead and leave it to uh, to a quick vote. It's only fair we bring the Chiefs. I suppose the Chiefs did win in the uh, the initial battle between, you know, the Barons, the Patricians, and the Chiefs. They've inherited the throne. Gotcha. So we'll say uh, we'll say for the next one that the Chiefs, you know, destroyed the other factions, you know, dominated everything. And then eventually the Counts and the Grandees sort of split off into their own respective factions. We'll have to do that for the uh, for the next stream. That'll be fun. The clothing is so good. Yeah, I love the grandees. They look so cool. All right. But I am going to try and limit myself to uh, to one game of King of the Castle per, uh, per day. Because uh, I know if I had the free time, I could just play this all day, every day. <laughs> so I am going to have to limit myself here. Destroy no the patricians and their peasants and bards went across the sea with the other guy from game two. Oh, they escaped with Lord Killerman 0922 the first. <laughs> oh, that would be certainly something. They went to the Isle of Saul to live in luxury. <laughs> Alright. But yeah, I am going to go ahead and we'll see about setting up a raid here on uh, another channel. Let's see here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, let's go ahead and raid one of my buddies playing Neo 2. Alright, once you're in there, hit him with a big hey -o from Rose. H-E-Y-O exclamation point. We'll all just send it as we enter. It'll be a good time. All right, let's do it.